the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today our prayer intention is for all those students who are at home continuing their education, their schooling, via digital platforms and other, other media. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph, also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, a Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned, then brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, the Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord, Lord is king, he is robed, robed in majesty. majesty. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old. From everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord, Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, <clears throat> You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear, it, hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this. Amen, amen, I say to you. We speak of what we know, 
and we testify to what we have seen, but you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, we've now been at this exercise of curfews and lockdowns for some time now. And no doubt, even though we've been keeping in touch with our relatives and friends by texting, by perhaps even FaceTiming and all the other means and telephone calling and so on, perhaps we haven't seen many of them in the flesh for perhaps as long as a month now. And uh, we think about them a lot. In fact, we even think about the people we don't get along with that much, a lot these days. That's because we're all social beings. We crave that interaction with others. That's why it's so difficult for us to abide by curfews and lockdowns. But in this current circumstance, it is necessary for us to do so. Very necessary. So let us continue to remain faithful to what's required of us at this time. Only go out when it's absolutely necessary practice your social distancing when you do, wear your face masks, and of course, of all things, try to stay home as often as you can, washing your hands as regularly as possible, as, re as required. Today, the 21st of April, is the Feast of St. Anselm, and so on this day we send a special greeting to Father Noel Clark, Deacon Ricardo de Mera, and all the wonderful parishioners of St. Anselm Parish as they celebrate today the feast of their parish patron, St. Anselm. We go straight to our gospel, and our gospel really has Jesus and Nicodemus continuing the conversation they began yesterday. Nicodemus seems unable to grasp what it means to be born from above, and Jesus seeks to explain. But as the conversation goes on towards the end of today's gospel, Jesus actually predicts his own passion. And he does so by making reference to an event that took place back on the Exodus journey, where the people have become unfaithful to the Lord, and in fact even made themselves an image which they were worshipping and so on. And in punishment, the Lord actually had these serpents attack the people and harm them. But then he relented in his punishment and he asked Moses to fashion a, a bronze serpent, put it on a, on a pole and raise it up in the midst of the people and all those who looked upon it would be healed. So that serpent then became a sign and a source of healing. Likewise, he's predicting that when he's raised on the cross, looking at him, his being raised on the cross will likewise for us be a sign and a source of our salvation. As we continue our journey through this Easter season, of course, our constant companion each day at worship is the Acts of the Apostles. And of course, I've asked you to spend some time reading prayerfully and leisurely the Acts of the Apostles, getting a sense of how the earliest community responded in the light of that profound experience we know as the resurrection of the Lord. Our reading today from the Acts is one of three descriptions of that first community of believers. And not Eli's presentation, to be sure, but nonetheless it conveys to us the profound care they had for one another, the profound desire they had to actually make personal sacrifices for the benefit of each other. Indeed, we are told that this was the way in which they responded to the resurrection. They bore witness to the resurrection. This was the way in which you might say they were actually going, undergoing an experience of being 
that conversion of thought and action and life, which we could easily describe as being born from above. In this reading today, we come across this expression describing that earliest community as being of one heart and mind. Many, many years ago, when I was a seminarian still, I remember reading that passage and being so struck by it, it stayed with me. It stayed with me to the extent that when I was called to serve as bishop, I used that expression as my Episcopal motto of one heart and mind, Acts 4.32. So if you ever wondered where my Episcopal motto came from, now you know. In that same passage, though, we encounter a character named Barnabas, and we're told that the name Barnabas means son of encouragement. And we see that Barnabas was an exemplary, generous person in that earliest community. On a day like today, on a in a time like this, we all need to become sons and daughter, uh, daughters of encouragement to one another. We all need at this time to become, in our own way, Barnabases. Over the years since I've become the bishop, on a number of occasions I've taken post-confirmation youth on pilgrimages, sometimes in the family islands, but mostly here in New Providence. And for those pilgrimages, each pilgrim is given a pilgrim's backpack. And that backpack contains a number of things. Among them, the rosary. Today I'm asking all those young people who have made those pilgrimages with me to find those backpacks and find that rosary. Take it out and use it. Pray the rosary. In fact, I'll be more specific than that. During this Easter season, between now and the 31st of May, which is Pentecost, I encourage you to pray the rosary at least three times, and specifically to pray the glorious mysteries. So the rest of us, dear friends, let us continue our prayerful reading of the Acts of the Apostles during this time we have, as we are in the midst of our curfews and lockdowns. Let us read it and come to get a sense of how it is that that earliest community was so concerned and so caring about each other under the impact of that experience we know as the resurrection of the Lord. Let us understand what it could have meant for them to be of one heart and mind. And let us yearn to be likewise of one heart and mind. For that is our heritage. It should also be our ambition and our goal. Let us now place our needs before the Lord this day. Let us pray, pray first of all for all those students who are now back at home in the digital format or on the television taking their lessons and continuing their schooling, that they may have the patience, the courage, the endurance to work and to work well and use this time most profitably and for the parents who must guide them that they may have the patience to do so. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church throughout the world and for Francis, our Pope, that he may continue to guide us as a community of faith that after the manner of Christ, the Good Shepherd, with courage and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our civic leaders, particularly our government leaders, our prime minister and his cabinet, that they may continue to lead us through this particular crisis to lead us with a firm and steady hand, to lead us through it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for all the technical teams, the doctors and the researchers, and all those who must do the contact searches and so forth, that the Lord may guide them and protect them in their work and give them always a sense of encouragement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray at this time for all those who may find themselves now unemployed, that Lord grant them hope and that we all have a sense of willingness to grant them whatever support we can. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this time, we place before the Lord all those who are afflicted, who are infected with this COVID-19, all the 
case is now before us, that the Lord may grant them healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we now place before you all those needs which weigh most heavily upon our hearts. For all these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear, our Lord, our prayers and grant our needs in the court of your will and keep us, keep us always safe and grateful and faithful in your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the, whole, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all are risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holy. Holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, our holy servant, with all the clergy, and with all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Apostle, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the 
unity of the Holy Spirit, for glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe through tonight. Amen. May the body of Christ keep me safe through tonight. Amen. now, since we are unable to join in receiving communion physically, as the church provides for us, we now make an act of spiritual communion as we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Once again, I wish you all a wonderful day. Let us continue to observe what is required of us in terms of our curfew and wearing face masks if we must go out, washing our hands regularly, practicing our social distancing. Let us look out for those who may be lonely, give them a call, send them a text message. Let us be as, be as best we can, like our earliest forebears of one heart and mind during these challenging days. And then, of course, we see you tomorrow for Mass at 9 a.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.